Hello, welcome to Jessica Stories podcast. My name is Jessica Carney and I'm your host. I will be sharing the stories from my life in hopes to entertain you, to connect with you, but my greatest desire is that these stories will help you look at your own life and see the awesome stories that you are living and the lessons that they hold. And I hope it will add light into your life and help you act with more courage. It's December, sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening, a beautiful sight, we're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. It is December and I'm so very thrilled. I am happy for this awesome Christmas season that is here and I wanted to share something that is adding so much light into my life. Are you ready? Okay, it's called Light the World Christmas 2019 and this speaks my language friends because I am all about light. I love the concept of it. I love teaching about it. I love seeking after more light in my life because that's why I tell you things that are adding light to my life and ask you to share yours because this is my language. So, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has created a Light the World One by One campaign because they want to encourage all of us to add light. And if you go to a website, comeuntochrist.org slash light dash the dash world, then you're going to scooch down and there'll be this big section that'll say, get daily service prompts. And then you click sign up, you're popping your little phone number and then voila, every day you're going to get a little prompt and it's going to give you an idea of something you could do that would add light into your life and into other people's lives. And it's just a great way to move throughout this awesome season, remembering the reason the it's a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and a time to invite people to partake of his glorious gospel and the redeeming love that he has for all of us. And that is adding so much light into my life. And I want to encourage you to go do it if that sounds like something fun to you. Now, my darlings, what is my dog up to? Well, she's been going on lots of walks and I just feel like a really good dog owner right now. She has been doing very well and we normally walk her with a gentle leader if you know what that is it kind of goes around her nose and then wraps around her ears because if you just hook the leash onto her collar she will pull your arm out of your socket it is not a pleasant experience so we've been using the gentle leader for years and years and years but because she's been wearing a harness a lot lately because I have to click her to a cable when she goes outside I have been clicking her into the harness and it's actually been going really well. So I guess we are growing in our dog ownership. (laughs) Oh, it's taken us like 10 years (laughs) to figure some things out. A little bit of trivia for you, darlings. In Christmas, in England, in Christmas, at Christmas is a better way of saying it. We love mince pies. When I say we, I don't mean all of England, but most of England really does love the mince pies. And it's made from mince meat, but this is not mince meat the way that Americans think of mince meat as like ground beef. No, darlings. No, it's raisins and sultanas and currants and yumminesses, all kind of. I don't even know how you make it because I've never made mincemeat. I just buy it. But anyway, you put it in pastry and it's amazing and delicious for those of us that have taste busts that like, not taste bust. No, that would be odd. Taste buds that like that. And I've been able to find good mincemeat here in America at the store World Market. And I make them and only me and my youngest son, Lucas, eat it. No one else likes it. But then more for us, baby. That's something that I love so much. And I miss that you can't just buy them in the stores here. You have to make them all the time. Even though I do think homemade are better. But that is something that we love in England so very much. And Christmas cake is not like a cake that Americans would think of. It is a very rich fruit cake that I think is delicious. And my mum is so awesome at making it. 
And um, maybe one of these years I'll have to learn how to make it because she might not want to make me one every year. And that's okay. Today, the story that I'm going to share with you is the story of our family Christmas cards. Ah, Is that so crazy? Do you guys do Christmas cards? I want you just to say out loud wherever you are, do you do a Christmas card? (laughs) So let me take you on a little bit of a journey. Um, when I got married, I got married young. I was 20 years old and a few months. And I had grown up and in our family, my mum would send out Christmas cards to friends and family that we haven't seen for a while with this printout of all the awesome updates of our family. And this is how we'd keep in touch. Nowadays, we keep in touch through social media a lot more and through the technologies that we have. But back then, there there just wasn't those things available. And so Christmas cards were a really important part of keeping tabs on different people and where they're at and what they're up to. And when I got married, I was very excited about sending out our first Christmas card. And I remember it was at my brother's apartment with his wife, Kim, and um, we had them take a picture next to the inside of their front door and that was the picture that we put in our Christmas card that year and we looked so young and naive and clueless because we were (laughs) and I sent along my letter expressing all the delights that we had achieved throughout the year and then as we started having kids we would do a Christmas card as well and then our kids got more vocal and here's the thing um they didn't enjoy having their pictures taken. And at the time I had a small photography business where I would take family pictures and often the family pictures were orchestrated by the mother because she cares about documenting this part of her life because it's so important to her and she wants to record her family and what they were like. But the kids and the dad did not enjoy it. And so when I would do family sessions, I felt as though I was kind of a therapist trying to keep everyone happy about this experience that most of them didn't want to be a part of. And then we'd create these images. But when I would look at the images and they'd be beautiful images, it's amazing what you can do, even when people aren't very happy and don't want to be there. They'd have these images where they look so happy and wonderful, but I'd remember the kind of argument that was happening or the feeling of frustration that was exploding towards each other but you can't see that in the picture and I felt really frustrated with my own family because every time I try and get together I'd have to bribe them and do this do that and they weren't invested they didn't want to do it and so when my youngest was about five years old I think no it was younger than that it was more like four I decided that we had to approach this differently because in my family I really wanted pictures. It was important. And I wanted my pictures to evoke a memory of a really good experience. And my kids did not want to be dressed in cute clothes that were restrictive and just smile. And my husband wasn't into either. But my husband and kids have a really good sense of humor. And they like dressing up. So I pitched the idea that we would do awkward family photos. In the first year, my husband, Ben, was like, let's wear leotards. And I thought, let's do it. So we went to Goodwill, went to the thrift store. We found some leotards and they were, (laughs) Ben wore a lady's leotard because they didn't have any leotards in the men's section. Shocker. And it was very tight on his body. (laughs) So much so that when we took it off, there were marks on his shoulders from how tight the leotard was on his body. But my parents were in town and I said, Mom, will you take our family picture? Um, we'll just go down to the field and will you take it for us? And she's, oh, yeah, sure. So we pop upstairs and we all get into our leotards and we come bounding down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of circus folk. Oh, we are carnies, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> and my mom is so taken back. She's looking at us with her mouth half open. 
what are you wearing? And I said, well, we're going to do funny pictures. We're doing awkward pictures in leotards. My dad did not get this at all. He thought we were totally crackers. And we are. So he was right there. We hop off and we go down to the field and we take some family pictures. And we have this grand old time. My kids are in leotards with snow boots on. We are... <laughs> doing the oddest most awkward moves that my mom is taking pictures of and this was the first family Christmas awkward card we sent out and everyone loved it we had such a great time and this began this new tradition that we would create awkward family Christmas cards and all of a sudden, something that used to be frustrating for me, annoying for my kids, and boring for my husband, suddenly became something that we're all invested in. And we could all look back at those pictures with amazing stories and laughter. And a few years later, we decided to be white trash. So we all dressed up in interesting clothing choices. And we went through the Sonic drive through um, Lucas got his very first corn dog because we wanted a corn dog to be in the picture. And <laughs> he was wearing a pair of shorts for a three month old. That's how tiny they were. And we they kind of looked like briefs. It was very awkward, very odd and amazing. I had clothing stuffed in my belly to make me look pregnant and had pink lipstick all over my teeth. It was so epic. And we loved it and we laughed. And our cousins were actually doing another photo for theirs. And their kids were like, can we be white trash with the carnies? Because <laughs> we were so cool. Another favorite was a few years ago, we were really inspired by those Olin Mills um, 1980s family portraits. And we did our own. Everyone was in a wig. We looked epic. And there was a very large awkward kissing picture <laughs> yes we did that and sent it to everyone last year we were nacho libre and um the kids argued over who got to be escalino escalado i don't remember his name but they argued over who would be him and it's been such a joy having this tradition and working together on creating these Christmas cards that all of us are excited about. And our family gets so excited about what our next card will be. I was just at the costume shop yesterday purchasing things for our next one that will be coming out. And we are excited to share this. And I wanted to share this story with you because here is the thing, my darlings. Sometimes we have ideas in our head of how things are supposed to be. Just like I thought our Christmas card had to have us all sitting looking very happy and delighted about our life and accompanied with kind of a letter of how awesome we are. And that's one way to do it, okay? It did not work for my family. <laughs> and the thing is, it didn't reflect who my family are either, we are a bunch of carnies and we are goofy and fun and extravagant and just kind of beat to our own drum. And so doing it that way did not fit for us. And we had to get creative. And once I kind of changed my idea of what our family Christmas pictures could be like, it provided this possibility an opportunity that would nourish our family, that would reflect who we are, and also provide great entertainment for other people. Is there something in your life that you're kind of stuck on an idea that isn't working for you anymore? Maybe it's an idea of who you wanted to be when you were older and you're not that and maybe it frustrates you because you've been trying to be a certain version of yourself, but that's just not who you are. Do you think you could change your, the story you tell yourself, change the standards that you have to fit who you are? I remember wanting to be on Broadway. That was my dream. I wanted to be on Broadway and that was everything that I desired. 
And I remember when I had kids often daydreaming about it and thinking about it. The thing is, I wasn't signing up for any classes to help me progress towards it. I would just stay in this dreamlike space of, oh, I wish that was me. But I really didn't wish it was me because I wasn't acting on it. And when I challenged myself and thought, why aren't you acting on it? It's because that wasn't actually what I wanted. And sometimes we just get stuck in these ideas because maybe they're popular. Maybe they work for other people. And maybe we think we want to belong in that tribe. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't fit us. Just like the regular cute family picture for Christmas cards does not fit my family. It is not who we are. And that is okay. And it's a delight to receive other people's Christmas cards. And it's a delight for us to create our own because we had the courage to open our mind and embrace different ideas that would work for us. I think it's super interesting how in the scriptures, we do not learn much about uh, Jesus Christ's personality. We learn a lot about his attributes, but personality and attributes are different. For example, I, let's have an attribute that I am kind. I am kind, right? And someone next to me, Penelope, is kind too. But the way that we share our kindness is different. Maybe my kindness is shown through connecting and talking to strangers that I see as I go about my day. And maybe Penelope's kindness is expressed through sending personal notes to friends. So we can still have the same attribute, but the way in which we express it goes through our personality. And we don't learn a lot about Jesus Christ's personality. And I think there's a reason why we don't. Because we tend to like to copy people, right? So if if in the scriptures it, it told us that Jesus had this attribute and he did it this way, this specific way, we might all think, oh, I have to do it that way because I want to be like Jesus and that's the only way I can be like Jesus. And then if we didn't feel fulfilled that way, we would be confused. But rather, he just asks us to be kind. He asks us to be patient. He asks us to be humble. He asks us to be faithful, to be obedient. And we can develop all those attributes through our own personality and our own individual way in which we embrace the world. And I love that. I wrote this song a few years ago. Well, it was probably like five years ago now. It's called All In My Head. And in it, it says, sometimes I wish that I was not even me. My mind is tangled up in trying to be someone else. But then I remember that God has a plan and he created me the way that I am so I can grow. And I love this reminder that I taught myself as I try and copy other people, I will not be able to embrace the amazing gifts that God has given me. And it's in recognizing that my individual worth, the way I see the world and the experiences that I have are the things that will bring me closest to Christ and Give me the ability to shine his light in the most radiant way. I want to share with you a scripture in 3 Nephi. This is in chapter 18, verse 24. This is when Christ has come to America to after he's died and been resurrected. And he says, Therefore, hold up your light that it might shine unto the world. Behold, I am the light which ye shall hold up. That which ye have seen me do, behold, ye see that I have prayed unto my Father, and ye all have witnessed. I love that he reminds them to hold up his light and to follow what he has done. But he doesn't tell us to copy me in my personality. Rather, he encourages us to take the light he has to offer. And then as we are true to the gifts that God has given us, we will be able to radiate that light the brightest 
through our own perspective, through our own individual tendencies and our divine nature. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you and I pray for you. If you have been blessed by this podcast, if you have felt that it has added light to your life, would you please go onto iTunes and leave a five-star review for that is the way that it will come up for other people that are looking for this type of podcast. And if you have any friends that would be blessed by it, would you share it with them? I hope that you will go forth with courage to seek light and shine bright.